Hello, this is Dr. Grande. Welcome to my video on conducting the Brown Forsyth test using SPSS. I have here in the SPSS data editor fictitious data, and it's configured for one way ANOVA. So I have one independent variable. In this case, it has three levels group therapy, rational mode of behavior therapy, and treatment as usual. And the sample sizes are equal 30 for each group. And then I have a dependent variable anxiety and we'll assume that this is recorded as a t-score and that's a standardized score that has a mean of 50 and a standard deviation of 10. So as I indicated normally in this situation we would use an ANOVA, a one-way ANOVA specifically here because we have one independent variable and one dependent variable and one of the assumptions for a one-way ANOVA is that we have homogeneity of variance. So if I go to analyze and compare means, I can see the dialog for one-way ANOVA. I'm going to move anxiety into the dependent list list box and the independent variable treatment into the factor text box. And because this is just for the purposes of testing the assumption of homogeneity variance, I'm going to go to options and under statistics, check off homogeneity of variance test. Click continue and then click OK. And you can see this is fairly straightforward as I've limited the output to the results for the ANOVA and the Levine's test. That's the test of homogeneity of variances. So before we could even interpret the p-value here for ANOVA, we would need to take a look at the p-value for the Levine's test and we can see that is statistically significant. So we need to reject the null hypothesis that the variances are homogeneous. So we have violated the assumption of homogeneity of variance. Therefore we don't have confidence in the p-value that was generated here for ANOVA. So to get another idea of what it means to violate the homogeneity of variance assumption, if we go into analyze descriptive statistics and then explore and again move anxiety to the dependent list list box and treatment in this case to the factor list list box. I'm going to go to statistics and I'm going to add outliers. I'm going to check off outliers. Continue. Under plots uh, stem and leaf is checked off by default. I'm going to uncheck that and click continue and no changes here under options and then click OK. And we can see we have the dependent variable anxiety broken down by level of the independent variable. So the first level is group therapy. We can see a range of 16, an interquartile range of 8, and move down to REBT, a range of 23, an interquartile range of 13, and then for treatment as usual, a range of 42, and an interquartile range of 16. Also notice the variance statistics. We have a variance of 24 here for group therapy, 49 for REBT, and 119, almost 120, for treatment as usual. So if we move down to the box plot, we can see what it looks like when we have a violation of the homogeneity of variance assumption. Looking at the interquartile range, of course, we saw those in the descriptors, but we can see it here in the box plot. It's smaller for group therapy, a bit larger for REBT, and the largest here for treatment as usual. And if we look at the range, the highest value, the top whisker, minus the lowest value, again we saw this from the descriptive statistics, the range is the smallest for group therapy, in the middle for REBT, and the range is the greatest for treatment as usual. So when interpreting this box plot, it would not be surprising that this is associated with a statistically significant Levine's test. And this is where the Brown Forsyth test comes in. If we go back to analyze and compare means and move over to one way ANOVA, we can see it's already configured from before. We go into options. We know now that we've violated the homogeneity of variance 
assumption, so we're going to add the Brown Forsyth test. So I'm going to check this off and click Continue. And under Post Hoc, you can see we have equal variances assumed, this frame, and the frame below that is equal variances not assumed. Well, of course, in this instance, we're not going to assume equal variances. And I'm going to use the Games Howl post hoc test here. Click Continue, and then click OK. And we can see now, of course, we have the same Levine statistic value as we had before with the 1Y Nova. It's the same, same test. And, of course, the same result for Nova, but we're going to interpret the Brown Foresight statistic, the robust test of quality of means, this table here, and we can see we have a statistically significant finding. 0 0.041 is less than 0 0.05, so this is statistically significant. Now in this particular case, if we interpreted the p-value from ANOVA, we would have come up with the same result. Both are statistically significant, but you can see here that there could be an instance where you have a statistically significant finding for the ANOVA but not for the Brown Foresight. Also noteworthy here as we move down to the Games Howell post hoc test under multiple comparisons and we look at each level of the independent variable compared to the other levels, the pairwise comparisons. We can see group therapy and REBT. There is no statistically significant difference between those scores group therapy and treatment as usual, not statistically significant, and REBT and treatment as usual, not statistically significant. So even though the Brown Foresight had a statistically significant result, we don't have statistical significance on any of the pairwise comparisons. So going back up to analyze, I want to show you one more feature of the compare means one way ANOVA under options you see I checked off Brown Foresight to get the result here. There's also the Welsh test. And both the Brown Foresight and the Welsh test are used for the same reason, which would be a violation of the homogeneity of variance assumption and or unequal sample sizes. Now in this case we have equal sample sizes, so it would just be for the homogeneity of variance violation. But I click continue, click OK you can see that it will calculate the results for both the Welsh test and the Brown Foresight test. These tests are fairly similar. However, overall, it appears to be generally accepted that the Welsh test is more powerful, meaning it's more likely to detect a difference that's actually there. But some researchers prefer to use the Brown Foresight when the sample sizes are equal or fairly close to equal. In this case, since we had 30 observations in each group, the Brown Forsyth might be a better choice. Although, as you can see in SPSS, it's easy enough to run both tests and then interpret both results. And then make the decision to review the multiple comparisons based on the more conservative finding in this case it would be the Brown Forsyth at 0 0.041 as opposed to the Welsh at 0 0.037. Of course they're both statistically significant. But just as was the case with the ANOVA and the Brown Forsyth, there may be an instance where one of these results is statistically significant and the other is not. In that case it would not be unusual to interpret the more conservative finding. I hope you found this video on conducting the Brown Foresight test to be helpful. As always, if you have any questions or concerns, feel free to contact me and I'll be happy to assist you.